Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I have to take care of this. Look like this screen is trying to. Is it like this cord might be weakened? I need it on the way. Everyone is trying to go out. Hey, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Welcome on today. Glad to be before you. Glad for another um, Sabbath. You okay? So I'm getting your eye. You okay? But good morning, everybody. Almost uh, noon. We're glad to be before you here again today. Break bread with you, love on you, fellowship with you. Just give you all a chance to come into the room. Yes. Yeah, share. I was just about to say that as you come in, please share. Don't mind us. We do break bread literally on the Shabbat. I'm hungry today. Does <laughs> <laughs> he have Elijah? Setting the atmosphere for yes, us. Yes, praise the Father for his talents and his heart as he gives it back up to the Father today. Yes. Hope y'all been having a wonderful week so far. As uh, Monday we celebrated our holy feast day, Feast of Trumpet. And, uh, some of us were able to get together and eat together, and uh, a lot of us was able to get together on Zoom. So shout out Jenna, Jarrell, yeah. shout out to Miss Jones and Johnville and Adriana for coming by. Yeah, and, uh, and everybody who popped in. Yeah, and Shay, I think Shay jumped on, right? I think so. All right. But yeah, shout out to y'all. Uh, Shabbat Shalom this morning. Shabbat Shalom. Father has uh, spoken a wonderful word that he's given to Shamoris, and so I'm excited to hear what he's uh, spoken into her, and he's allowed me some insight in on the word, but uh, more so I'm excited to hear what he's been dealing with Shamoris on today, so as everyone come in, you know how we do, we share some the reason feed. I'm not able to get into my Facebook account hmm. online. It may, may be tripping. You able to get into it on your phone? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Just on the computer. It maybe. just keeps popping up one that's, that's dead. That's not uh, even here. Okay. Yeah, I got to do this. Something's up with this screen. I'm, I'm going to take a look at this later on. I got to fix this because it seems like it's like it's wanting to go out and flash, like, uh, like it's trying to go dim on that side. I take there it apart go. and then uh, I, I mean I won't take the now? camera apart, but I take the uh, take it off and then rehook it up. And see if it's doing anything for us. Y'all, if y'all if we feel like we just lack the days of this morning, I'm gonna <laughs> tell you Elijah has such a way to soothe when he says the atmosphere. He really brings in a peace and a calm. Um, and I'm over here just relaxed and, and feeling good and <laughs> and encouraged. But that's what happens when he says the atmosphere every single time. You just get this sense of calm and peace and, and reassurance. And that's what's in my spirit today. And as I sit here, it's kind of like Ms. Jones, Shabbat a Shabbat. breath of fresh air. We've missed him. Yeah. You know, playing, playing the, the guitar. Shabbat Shalom to those of you that are on. I can't see who's there. Uh, but if you can, uh, 
if you want to speak, definitely we would love to Flash. shout you out. Shabbat Shalom, Mama, where you at? We're looking for you in the building. Yes, we're looking for TGCB. Where y'all at, where man? Where y'all at? No oversleeping. You know, we, we, we feasting. But we have a, a just a word of encouragement today that we're going to get into. Um, if, if you were able to take note, process and promises is what he put in my spirit today. Um, and I'm just encouraged. I want you all to be encouraged. Good morning, Miss Jones. We're looking for you. Can't wait for you to get here. Hallelujah. To those of you who are worshiping, hallelujah. Praise the Father for your heart toward him this morning. Go ahead and do some sharing online. As soon as I come over there, I'm going to get started. I'm going to pray that way. Yeah. Had to grab me a water. All right. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Gerald. Let's go ahead and go before the Father with prayer so he can have his time, have his way, and do whatever he deems fit with us. Abba Yah, we thank you. You are so mindful. We love you. We adore you. We ahava you for you ahava us first. You loved us first. Have your way in this place. Take us out of ourselves and place us in the realms of your spirit. Whatever you deem to do, whatever you see fit to do, this is your place. Yes, Father. We are your people. We are your Yehudi. This is your Kahel. We desire to be Kodoshim, your saints. Yes, Father. Anything in our hearts or our minds or our spirit that's not like you, we ask that you remove it. We want you. We need you. Yes, we need to hear from you clearly. Yes, Father. Father, we don't want another hyped up word. We don't want anything that's going to tickle our emotions or our fancy. Father, we need to hear sound instruction. Yes, Father. We need Torah, your law, your statutes, your commandments, your will, your way. Everything else can wait. Everything else is not important, to be honest. Yes, Father, thank you. But I pray that those that have the ears to hear and the eyes to see what you're saying, let their shackles be broken on today. Let freedom come forth on today. Let sound understanding come forth on today. Bring forth life. Plant the noon, the seed. And let us inherit your word. Torah. For you are mindful, you are worthy, you are holy. We thank you for your hen and your hesed, your grace and your mercy, for your shalom, your peace. And we thank you just because we owe you the worship. We owe you the praise from the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah. And you're waving your hand a second time to gather your people back. Father, we want to be found guilty of doing your will. We don't want to be found guilty of doing Bless nothing. You. We're not trying to gain the world and lose our soul. That's right. We're not trying to look good in the eyes of man. But Father, we do want to be pleasing unto you and hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. So those that may be dealing with depression, low self-esteem, anger, addiction, heartache, heartbreak, whatever the case may be, whatever's before them, your word says we have victory. And in that, 
And because you said it, it is so. I don't care what no man says. Let every man be a liar. But your word, your Torah, it is truth. And because you said we're set free, because you said we are healed, because you said we have our victory, because you said we can take refuge and hide in your wings, because you said your name is a strong tower. Yes, Father, thank you. Based upon the truth, the emet and I emuna, the truth and our faith in Yeshua, our Hamashiach, our Messiah, it is so. In the matchless name of Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. And shalom. And shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Father. Listen, I'm excited this morning um, just because I know that he's with me, just because I know that he's with my family, um, that today he, he woke us up on purpose for purpose, that he may be glorified. Um, that while I don't have it all figured out, he absolutely does. Bless you. Bless you. And while I might try to do my plans, his plans are the one that promises a future and a hope and not to harm me. Same applies to you. Those of you who choose him, receive him, believe him, right? Hallelujah. And so we're going to go and get started. Um, but I will give a fair warning. Elijah has a, a competition this morning. We'll pray um, there's his strength and, and the team's strength today. Um, but Pastor is going to be taking him, um, you know, to, to where he needs to be for that competition. So he's going to leave out of here shortly um, to come back. But I don't plan to be before you long. Um, you know, this, is, this just ministered to me. The beautiful thing when you are looking into the Word and, and, and you are just in a place where you desire him he said those who thirst out the righteousness shall be filled and that's exactly what happens um i know that the word gives you instruction it gives you uh just what you need to navigate through whatever phase of life that you're in whatever circumstance situation that you are facing um, and when you lean to him and you look to the father and you look to the hills from where your help comes from you're going to get just that you're going to get help. You're going to get away. You're going to get the solution. You're going to get what you need to do in the midst of the storm. You're going to get what you need to do in the midst of the weight. You're going to come back to a righteous way of thinking um, because you desire that by going into the word. You know, um, most people, many people, I should say, you know, they, they go through things and they don't want to pray about it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to look in the word. They want to feel... Like they're doing something and they're in control. They want to feed the flesh and entertain the desires of their heart when they become angry. Um, and, and really no good comes from that for them. Um, but we thank you, Father, that, that he does still bestow grace. He does still bestow mercy that we may find our way to him in those moments. Right. right? And so... Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want you all, if you can, just open up your, your, your Bibles. Um, yes, we still touch our Bibles. Yes, we still open them. And yes, we still look to them. Um, if you can get your instructions out, your Torah. I don't know where you're going to look for any other instruction, to be honest. You know, people do all kinds of things. But this, a lot of people aren't touching their books anymore. They're not in the, the physical oh, Bible. God, they are all in the land of electronic. But sometimes to touch it and to turn the page and to, to connect with it... Um, is a different experience and so we still do that it's not the books are not obsolete over here <laughs> so um, if you could turn with um, us to Psalms 37 Psalms 37 37 mama says she on the way good 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 who your mom oh. and I'm a my mama yeah. who is my mother <laughs> Who is my brother for this? <laughs> you said Gigi. I done hit you with the scripture on me. Uh, I didn't know that was in there, did you? I knew that was in there. Right. Um, no, you you did a great job. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. That Thank was, you. That was in yonder. It's you, blurry to me. Uh, is it? Is it blur? Is is it blurry on your phone? The feed well, looks blurry. Man, yeah, because man, I, I gotta get another camera uh, for that specific. 
Because any time I, you know. Yeah, but he typically don't look blurry. To me, yeah, uh, to me, it don't it look don't. like this. I'm all in my glasses, like, ooh, this, this pretty. Let me see if I if I uh, if you back it out a little bit yeah that, might be that would look like but that's what it always looks like I'm gonna get another camera okay and then position it uh, closer that way I don't have to yeah try to that zoom just that that in. blur is it might make it hard for those who are watching it's been it. looking like that okay I didn't it didn't look that bad to me but I got you <laughs> all right so <laughs> Psalm 37 Psalm 37. Um, you want me to we're read gonna it? We're going to get into today. You want me to read it? You want to read? We've been uh, a blur to people. <laughs> but you can, you read can read it. You can read it. All right. Unless you want to. Well, you're going to have to get ready to go. Yeah, but I can read it before twelve fifteen. Uh, I I got it now. But yeah, if you can bring it up here, if you don't mind, thank you. I was looking for it. Appreciate it, my man. All right. Tehillim, Psalm, chapter 37. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11 to your hearing. And it says this. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in Yahuwah and do good. So shall you dwell in the land, and truly ye shall be fed. Verse 4. Delight yourself also in Yahuwah, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto Yahuwah. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in Yahuwah and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Number eight, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself in any wise to do evil. I'm reading it this way on purpose. Can you keep going all the way to the to 40? Oh. Just read the whole chapter. Okay. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yahuwah, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, you shall delightly consider his place. I'm sorry, diligently, mm -hmm. shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of shalom, peace. The wicked plots against the just, and gnashes upon him with his teeth. Adonai shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bit their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such to be of upright conversation. Mm. The sword shall enter into their own hearts and their bows shall be broken. Mm. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Yahuwah upholds the righteous. Yahuwah knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. For they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahuwah shall be as the fat of lambs, and they shall consume unto smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borrows, yeah, I said that right. The wicked borrows and pays not against, again, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. It's three times I heard that. Mm -hmm. 
The steps of the man, steps of a good man, are ordered by Yahuwah, and he delighted in his way. Hmm, heard that three times. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for Yahuwah upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hmm. Seed, Newton. Mm -hmm. Better know who you are. Begging bread. He is ever, my, uh, ever merciful, and lends, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For Yahuwah loves judgment, and forsake not eth his Chassid, which, you know, that is saints. They are guarded forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Man, I can't wait to break that part down uh, forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom. Kokma speaks wisdom. And his tongue talks of judgment. The Torah. Talks of justice. I'm sorry, talks of uh, justice. Thank you for catching it. The Torah of his Elohim is in his heart, his Levav. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. Yahuwah will not leave him in his land, in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on El Yahuwah and guard his way. He, his shall, way. he shall exalt you to inherit the land. Man, he keep repeating this. I hope y'all are catching this. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Who gonna see it? We shall see okay. him, the righteous. I have seen the wicked in great power and spread himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away and lo, that's the Hebrew letter, uh, alphabet, hey, behold. lo, mm -hmm. behold, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man. Mark. Woo, that's that, that's that Hebrew letter, tav, mm -hmm. ending, sign. Mark the perfect man, and behold, there it is again. Hey, the uh, Yashri. Mm -hmm. For the end of that man is peace. Yes. But the transgressor shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation, the Yahushua, of the righteous is of Yahuwah. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Verse 40. And Yahuwah shall, shall help them. And deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Wow. Now that right there is a word. That is a word. I want you to just consider what we just read, what Pastor just read before you, Psalms 37. And I want you to say to yourself, process and promise. Process and promise. Go we've, we've said this, this so many times. Those of you who have just been a, been a part of a, our ministry, just kind of strive with Johnny and I um, just through the various days and times, you would have heard us say this before. At the end of process is what? Promise. And the thing that I love, that I absolutely hey, love, hey, good morning, hey, good morning. about the, uh, the father, actually, afternoon, <laughs> is... is he really is giving us the instruction. See, Abba Yah is a covenant keeper. Yeah. He's a promise keeper. Matter of fact, it was because of his own covenants, his own promises that she swore upon his own name that we have found ourselves in the grace and the mercy because of his own promises. Yeah. Right? And we have to remember that when it comes to covenants, that is an agreement. I do this and you do that. And if we get into our word, oftentimes it's if you, when you do this, then I will do that. So today we're going to get into that a little bit. Based I off mean, obedience, if, if you look at it, it if really you do is. this, then this happens. Yeah, because oftentimes we are trying to figure out how to apply this word to our life. So that we can get what he's promised, what, what, what the vision that he's shown us, the piece of vision that he's shown us, 
Um, but we try to do it by thinking in the natural and not in the spiritual. We actually do it because we forsake the word and we just try to figure it out based on life experiences and based on um, just the, I guess, the environment we come out of. It, it, it shapes our way of thinking sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so we'll use that. But the Father gives very clear instructions. So we're going to get into some things today. I'm going to take you on some instructions, and then I'm going to reveal unto you the promise. Yah willing, hallelujah, it comes across clearly today. But this specific thing um, that he's brought into, this specific word, I should say, that he's brought into our spirit, yeah, I want y'all to understand how on time this word is. Because many of you are challenged. And I'm not talking about that superficial, you know, everybody in the world is challenged and I am reaching so high into the Father. He's giving me this prophetic word and I can drop it like that. Right. No, I am talking about the season where it seems like the righteous are suffering in such a way um, where it feels like those who are doing wrong are really winning. Those who are, are just walking carelessly, recklessly, have more liberty, have more freedoms, getting more, more results and more. It looked like they got it going on. And we sit here saying, how much more can we take? Like, I don't even want all of what they got. But why what they got and the way they getting it is allowing them to experience life in this way and I'm over here suffering. Okay, hello somebody. Now let's be honest, sometimes being righteous don't show you the reward compared to that of the, the wicked. It seemed like they winning. It's so many of them. They outnumber us, right? Yeah. And they team up against us and they flex powers. And sometimes it can feel like we lose it. Sometimes it can feel like, you know, it just all came against us. And no matter how, and you know what we do. We try in our own strength to be righteous. We start right. saying stuff like, you know, Father, I pray. Father, I go to service. Father, I tithe. Father, I do this. I don't understand why they why they winning. I don't understand how they can form against me, and it feels like I lost. Am I am I the only one who's ever had that? Yeah. That moment. You are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you're not the only one. But these are very real moments. And this is why he tells us to meditate on his word day and night. Right. Because we will find that he has an answer and a solution. You won't have to look over to the wicked man and start to consider. Maybe you can bend the, the, the rules a little bit. Maybe you can bend and compromise his character in you so you can maybe get some relief. Amen. Right. You know, it's, it's like the righteous man that goes to the store to steal a pack of meat because his family's hungry. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, 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 it's just, we feel it. And the Father has an answer. There is not a situation, circumstance, or, or, or trial that you're going through that he doesn't cover. And I love Psalm 37 because it makes it plain and clear. The righteous from the wicked. What happens when you wait on him and how you wait on him is important. And, and the wicked. So we're going to get into it. And we're going to walk this thing down today. Now the focus on today. Take Elijah. The focus on today is going to be Psalms 37, 1 through 11. Um, but it was important that we read the whole chapter. Because the whole chapter is telling us and reassuring us and giving us more and more confidence um, of what the Father is saying. You know, he, he emphasizes some things. But I want you to just... just Hear me when I say this. Do not fret because of evildoers. I'm going to say that again. Do not fret. F-R-E-T because of evildoers. Now, many of us, how, how many of you who are in the building know what the word fret means? Fret, F R E T. When he says, do not fret. Don't be afraid of something. Don't be afraid. What do, what do you think? I was going to say something that line, but other than that, I'm not sure. Gotcha. So, this is why, you know, getting in the word is important because after I did my studying on fret, I realized I did do some fretting. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. I had to repent, Father. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't really break down that word. I took a universal assumption. I say universal. Maybe nobody assumed the thoughts that I, that I thought. But 
I didn't realize that that was, you know, my, I got that wrong. The first thing he says is do not fret because of evildoers. Right. So when we find ourselves in situations where people have taken opposition against us, the first thing we do is fret, most often. Right. Now we say, I didn't fret. Yes, you did, because we're going to break down what fret is, okay? Right. So fret is a word in Hebrew, and it is called hara. If I said that right, it's the hara. <laughs> and it is a word that means to be hot. Let me take a sip. Y'all got food in my food. Huh? You need else? Oh no, thank you. I'm good. My my food got cold, but I, that's all right. I was. I, it ain't but a bite. I'm hungry enough to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but it's a word that means to be hot, to be furious, to burn, become angry, and to be kindled. Thank you. It also uh, means like like kindle means like you you not just mad like you start taking motivation from that anger. Like when you kindle, it's like it just that that fire gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, and it starts to influence your behaviors. Now y'all ever got so mad at somebody that the more you think about it, the more you start doing something that you know you shouldn't be doing, or the more you encourage yourself, that's when you start getting a she got one more time to look over here. He got one more time to say this. This is this is kindling, okay? <laughs> and so also. It means uh, to be angry, to be incensed, just like I said, to uh, to heat oneself in vexation. You're getting vexed in your spirit. Woo, it ain't nothing like being vexed in your spirit because someone has done you wrong. Something has come against you. Now, that's what fret means. How many of y'all have got vexed in your spirit before? I'm talking about... Yeah. You know, when you vex in your spirit, it has done what? It has consumed you in thought. Woo! You start your day, you end your day, and you can't get no peace about the matter because in your eyes ain't enough been done. Hasn't been resolved. You ain't figured it out. You didn't clap back, snap back, or come back like you felt like you could have, and they seem like they won. Right? So now, even though you might not be speaking on it, and even though you might not be moving on it, you are warring on the inside because you have become kindled. So you're not sleeping good. You're waking up in a bad mood. You hate going to the place you got to be in company with them. You can't make good decisions because your thoughts are just kindled. You're vexing your spirit. You know, you can't take no joy. And it's not that you can't take it. You're often refusing. Mm -mm. I ain't even trying to laugh today because this ain't no laughing matter. You, for real, yeah. you, you just position yourself in the fret mode. Mm -hmm. And we don't always know it because we didn't break down and understand the fret. Right. Now, some people say fret means worry, but fret is a little bit different because worry can have a sense of fear, but fret has a sense of anger that drives you to sin. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now. Fret to consume your thoughts. Let's keep going. He said, because of evildoers. Don't do not fret. Don't don't get vexed in your spirit because of evildoers. That to me says, I got this. Like, don't don't put all of what, what you got on there. I got this. And then he says, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Okay. I feel like I'm not a jealous person. Yeah, we, we, many of us will say we're not envious people. Baby, I don't want what you got. Right? But we got to understand what he says is envious. See, envious is a word called kana. Kana. Q-A-N-A. -A. I wish Pastor was here to put this in for me. And it is a word in a, that means in a bad sense to be jealous. And y'all have to understand that the Bible says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Wow. So jealousy is not coveting per se. Jealousy is a sense of cruelness that leads to death. The word tells us that jealousy will drive people to do things that harm others and oftentimes harm themselves. 
I have never seen a jealous person win in a situation. Mm. You, can, you think about it. A person who has gotten so jealous, they hurt themselves trying to hurt the person they jealous of. Mm. It is as cruel as the grave. Mm. Now, I, I wish Pasta was here because we were going to break down these words. Kana. And he was going to pull up the, the Hebrew letters, the Aleph, the Noon, and the Kof. And it, it tells us a little bit about how this, this envious thing works because it has a, 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 it has a function of provoking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has, so jealous people often set traps. Jealous people, they set traps. They scheme, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a movement and then there's a zeal that supports that bad behavior, like that that function, right? So he says, don't be don't be envious, don't don't be so angry that your mind is consumed, and then don't be so envious that it causes you to provoke or to move in that set anger, mm -hmm. and that and that envy is cruel. Now here's the thing. The envying, and he's going to tell us why, but the envying is not just to have what they have. Because there are people who, um, that coveting is, is slightly different. Mm -hmm. But the envy is not so that I can get what you want. The envy is because you, sometimes the wicked people, not, well, let me, let me rephrase. Sometimes people will have a certain light or, or, of attention on them that we could desire for oneself. So to remove that is to have that in a sense, right? right, right. You, we, we, it, it's a function and a movement behind it that is actually causing us to operate. It's like the gasoline on the kindled uh, uh, fire stick. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a sm little, little flame is just kind of growing here. Takes a little time for it to grow in its kindle. Mm -hmm. But then you put jealousy on it and you douse it in the gasoline. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, oh. now you can't control it. It right. can't, you know, it can't be controlled. And right. people can try their best to talk sense and reasoning to you, but you have allowed your mind to be and your spirit to be consumed. And now you have that envy paired with it. It just blows the situation up so much bigger because you won't be able to hear reason. Mm. Right? Okay. And it says, of the workers of iniquity. Don't be jealous of the workers of iniquity. See, it's something about the illusion of freedom and not following the rules. Right. So we got to come and deal with the workers of iniquity. Because remember, this is something that was said again in another scripture that's very important. It says, uh, turn away from me for I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. That iniquity is a word called evil. Evil. Almost sounds like evil. It's spelled E-V-E-L in Hebrew. Evil. Evil. Evel, like think of E H V E L, Evel, okay. right? We put a little accent on it, a little, little. Uh, I'm not good with accents, but just imagine it's it's evil, right. <laughs> it's evil, right? Yeah. Um, but it is a word that means perverseness, unjust, unrighteous, um, wrong, violent, um, and, and so it's evil. It's what I is how I like to say evil. <laughs> <laughs> but that just think about that. It's not following the rules, the law. Now we as believers know the law is what the instructions of of the Father. It is Torah. So don't be jealous. Matter of fact, don't fret. Don't let it consume your mind. Nor be evil of the, uh, the, the workers of iniquity, the workers of lawlessness, those who do not follow the rules of the house, those who have chosen to do it the world's way and not my way. Don't be jealous of them. He says, because they're going to be cut down like the grass. Mm -hmm. And they're going to wither as green, green herb. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to take note. So he's given us instruction. And then he said, let me tell you why real quick, because I don't want you to get stuck on this. I'm going to cut them down. It, they look like they got it going on right now. They look like they're powerful, but they're going to get cut down. Do not want what they got. 
and do not fashion yourself to get what they got the way that they got it. Otherwise, you're going to what? Become the very thing that you that has formed against you. I always say that when he tells us to turn the other cheek and he tells us a soft turn to, a soft tongue turns away wrath. Yeah. But when you look at somebody who arguing and it, it and they arguing with each other and it's just a screaming fest, have you sat back and been like, "Ooh, they look a hot mess over there." Mm-hmm. Ooh, look at them. Like you yeah. can't tell that this person is a pastor first lady, a yeah. woman of the cloth, a man of the cloth. You can't tell that this person has a righteous bone in their body. Mm-hmm. You can't tell that they're justified in their anger and they're screaming and shouting. Right now, it kind of looks like like two demon spawns with against two demon spawns. Right. So most of the time, people just 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 leave that alone. <laughs> just leave it alone. But what happened is you started to look like that which you were oppo- was opposed against you. So if we have the righteous behavior in us, and I ain't saying it's easy. No, guilty. I've done that a few times. I lost my way. Uh, guilty. But praise the Father that it didn't end the way it could have ended. You know what I'm saying? I ain't the big bad wolf, and I ain't the toughest in the world. I'm I'm not gonna lie. You know I shouldn't put any 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 fear in the heart of any man because I'm not a god. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the god. But all I'm saying is there are times where just the right set of circumstances will take you into a place that you need the grace and the mercy of the Father because you you fail. Mm-hmm. I failed before, and so he tells us instead to do what in verse three, trust. In the Lord. How many of y'all trust in the Father? I do. Ooh, how many of y'all? Say it again. How many of y'all trust in the Father? I do. I do. I'm telling you. We, we, we trust in the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. And hang tight. I'm going to deal with that real quick. Trust in the Lord. So trust is a word that means bata. Bata in Hebrew. B-A-T-A-H. Bata. Okay? It means to have confidence, to be secure, to have hope, and, and, and to be sure. How many of y'all are that in the Father? You have, comp- you have that trust in Him. You have confidence in Him. You have, Bo, like if this was a fight in a ring, you're going to put your money on the Father as opposed to the other opponent. Opponent. Oftentimes, we don't look at that situation that way. We don't look at on this side is the uh, undefeated, most sovereign, high, holy king. Mm-hmm. And on this side is the never won a match. Big buff, you know, got the appearance like he got he all of that. But you know his track record, he ain't never won nothing, right. ain't going to win nothing. And it's very predictable. Right, right. We don't look at it like that. We start putting, removing the father and we put ourselves in the match. And when we put ourselves in the match, we don't have no confidence because now we're saying, hey, I'm suited and booted up in this ring, and I ain't had no boxing experience. Mm-hmm. And then you got, y'all, look, I'm going to say this real quick. This is a little bit of a tangent, but my niece has the uh, the VR with little, little handles. Mm-hmm. And I got in one of those things, and it had the, almost like, I don't know if it was called Mike Tyson Punch-Out, but, man, it reminded me of Mike Tyson Punch-Out. And the dude on the other end, I could tell he was bigger than me, and he was stronger, and he was buff. And, man, he getting your face, and he making a, I mean, I'm talking about gangster thug. I'm about to eat your face off like it was intense. And I was like, ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, that's real. He big. Like, you could, in the VR, you could, <laughs> you could take it all the way in. But I say that because my point is that's sometimes how we look at our situations. They are so big, you know. It has all these people believe in this, all these people aiding that, all these hands that's helping. When you realize you know the truth, that person know the truth, but for some reason it don't seem like the truth is on your side right now. Right. It seems like you suffering more than you are winning, and you ain't did the wrong, Amen. or you know what I'm saying, and, or you're yeah. drowning in the situation, and you sitting here like, okay, keep flexing, man, and I know I done turn the other cheek, and I know I done do this, that, and the third, but it looked like they're winning. And if I tell the lie or if I get on a level, I'm going to even the playing field and they're going to really see what's up. Like you, We do that with our circumstances, y'all. And I'm not just talking about people. Somebody watching saying, oh, Lord, she talked about somebody. No, I'm talking about our circumstances, our trials, those things that push you into a place where your confidence in the Father 
may be challenged. Mm -hmm. Your faith in the Father may be challenged. Your expectation in the Father may be challenged. And you didn't realize that that is the sole tactic of the enemy. He is always come to get you to question the word of the Father. So when you have a circumstance that make you wonder if the Father going to show up for you when he done showed up for you every single time, guess who was on the scene? When you have a situation that is seemingly impossible to overcome and, and he tells you that faith the size of a mustard seed will move mountains and you forgot that one, guess what just came up on the scene? You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so he tells us to trust in him. Have confidence that it don't matter how big, how wide, how strong, how bronze, no matter the reputation that preceded the opposition, didn't matter the system, the ways of the world, and the process that the world has laid out for it, none of that has anything to do with the sovereign power of the Father who is for you. Right? right? So have that confidence in, to, in Him. And then it says, and do good. Can you, somebody go open the door? Yeah, yeah. But... It says, trust in him and do good. Have confidence and do good. Have confidence and don't be evil. Have confidence and don't start lying. Have confidence and don't misstep. Have confidence, oh. y'all okay? <laughs> yeah. I, we were trying to figure out who it was. Oh, I could see. Was, oh. I could see through the thing. I was like, what's happening? Oh, it? We saw him. Yeah. But um, oh, I saw you pull up. We, we, we live on the same color scheme today. Hey, hey. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> your laptop. The greens. Um, but let's, let's get back into it. So he says to trust in him and to do good. You know what? Don't change who you are in that way. Keep striving for, for the goodness. Keep, keep fighting for your joy and your peace. Keep trusting that my word, my ways is going to, to work out in your benefit, in your favor, because I said that. Don't don't think that your suffering, uh, deter, uh, your suffering is the thing that tells you that you're not in righteous standing with the Father. Sometimes when you go through, people say, "Oh, you must be off with the Father." Like if you're going through hard times, that means you must have done something that the Father wasn't happy with. Like they start when you ain't bothered by nothing, then they often say, "Oh, you good with the Father?" But he said, "Blessed are those who suffer for my name's sake." Wow. So there is an element of suffering that's connected to his blessing, and the world will convince us otherwise, or people even just like they did Job. Job, for you to be going through this, you must have did something wrong. You had to. Have you considered? They wanted the man to think himself over. They wanted him to, to question, you know, uh, his his confidence. They wanted him to, to take ownership of being tried solely because he, he ticked off the most high. And that ain't what the word said. The word didn't say that the father was angry with him. The father had full confidence in him. That's why he said, have you tried my humble servant, son, uh, uh, my humble servant, Job? Humble being a word, y'all dependent. Don't matter what position he is in life, he's going to depend on me. Amen. His his wealth and his and his good reputation is not what defines him. He is actually a man uh, of my heart. He's actually a man after my mind. He's actually a man with my character. He's going to come back to me. Even his wife couldn't get him to turn against the Most High. And you know the word lets us know that the 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 wives has some type of influence in the the ears of their of their husbands. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you laying up with that lady. Y'all come on somebody, Samson. I ain't, you know, Amen. you get, our men can get vulnerable to the whispering in our ear. Come on, uh, Chihuahua and Adam. We, we, we have a, a, a help meet influence to help them to meet our desired outcome. Help them meet their desired outcome. We, we have a way. Yeah. And so the father is telling us to trust in him and to do good. Then he says, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Now I thought about that. Dwell in the land and, and feed on his faithfulness. This is going to make so much sense when Jay come in and he ties up this end part. But trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in his land. What's the land? The land of milk and honey. right? Yes. But the, the, yeah. <laughs> D dwell in the land. Right? And feed on his faithfulness. He was like, don't, don't Feed on your faithfulness because you ain't faithful. You ain't as faithful as you think. You, you're good one minute, you're not the next. You know, there is something that makes you stumble, makes you fall back, makes you make you uh, misstep. We, we all fall short, right? Yeah. So he said, feed on my faithfulness. 
My track record says I ain't never lied. My track record says I ain't never failed. If I said it, it won't return unto me void. I am the creator of the heavens and the earth. I am the one who has already set the wicked in their place. I am the one who has overcome, right, the the evil one. I am the one who 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 allow all of these things to come together. And I have told you that I am for you. Feed on my faithfulness. Let that instead of the incense of anger being kindled in you because of the wrongdoing or the circumstance. Feed on my faithfulness that that won't bother you, that it won't deter you, it won't consume your mind, and it won't lead you to think differently of me. It won't lead you to try to take matters in your own hands and take vengeance into your own hands and justice into your own hands and your own name. I'm going to tell you, your name ain't going to mean nothing. That's what we say. We got to do the name above all names. And y'all, side tangent, but it's important because we're talking about the name. We talked about the name. Yes, we are, because I feel it. But he says the name above all names. The name is important. I have come in my father's name, and the Hasatan has worked overtime to change the name. He didn't change his name in translation. It's always been Satan. Hasatan. I don't care if it's the King James, the New King James, the ESV, the NIV, the NLT, <laughs> the Word Bible. It is still Satan. I don't care if the year was doggone uh, 200 BC. Who <laughs> yeah. It was still the same. So you kind of got to see that there there is some some manipulations that have happened over time to deceive us into what going down that wider path. Deceiving us to what? Believing the falseness, to, to, to denying the Father. But thank you. He said that my sheep hears my voice, that he would bring back into our remembrance. And while he brings it back into our remembrance, he gave us a clear picture. If I had it, I'd show it to you right now. He said, this is Cesar Bourget, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Y'all yeah, going to get mad if you want to. White Jesus. Then he says, but go ahead and turn to Revelation. Let me show you who I am. Let me tell you who I am. Let me describe it. Right? Then he gives us the, the just the proof mm -hmm. that the name has been changed, and we get mad about it. Y'all, I, I taught Jesus too. I prayed to Jesus. I cried, felt the feels, did the whole nine worship too. But when he brought me into the knowledge of that truth, I refused to uh, to unknow that truth. I accepted the truth. I realized that when the days came where our Hamashiach walked this earth, there was no such letter as J. Mm -hmm. I don't mind switching it to the Y. I feel like it's a privilege and an honor to really know him by name, to be able to call on it. And then when I come and I read scripture that tells me what happens with the name, the power that's in the name, and, and how important it was to know and to be marked by the name, then I just thought that's something I just want to get right. Yeah, that's dispel. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I see that. I didn't. I didn't even have to just go in my word for that one. The world knows it. The world knows it, yeah. right? And so, nonetheless, we coming back around to feeding on His faithfulness, His faithfulness, and not our own. He tells us to delight ourselves. This is we said this before. Mm -hmm. Delight yourself also in Yahuwah, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. How many of you want the desires of your heart? See, this right here is telling you how to get them. This right here is telling you exactly what you have to do to get the desires of your heart. It says a key word called delight. How many of y'all delight? How many of you delight? Huh? Somewhat. See, that, that, that means that's an inward word. That's, a, that's the part we got to inspect when it comes to our expectations. If we're expecting the desires of our hearts, then we got to inspect, right? And if you ain't delighting, you ain't getting no desires. It's part of it. You have to. Go right on up here. So we're going to deal with delight thyself. It is a word called anag. Anag. Or anag, I'm sorry. Anag. And it means... Mm -hmm. It means to be soft, to be delicate, to be dainty, right? And and it might seem strange if you're thinking about this from a, a, a European uh, or English kind of definition. So we're going back to the Hebrew for everybody who's watching. We're going back to the Hebrew. And so when he says to be soft, 
you got to understand. I'm going to read this in, in the word. Be soft also in Yahuwah. Now he talks about, you got to think about soft in opposition of hard. So you understand that something that is made hard generally has an outer shell to protect something that is soft, right? But with the Father, you can be soft. You can actually be inside out. You can, you can reverse yourself inside out, and all your sensitive parts can be exposed to the Father. You can be soft in Him because you know the plans that He has for you are what? To give you a future and a hope, not to harm you, so there's right. no need for the hard. Right. Right? Also, delicate. But I... But I love this. So you can be vulnerable. You can be delicate in the Father. You can be precious. And he tells us who we are, the apple of his eye, right? Mm. He tells us who we are, that we, we, we are his, his, his children. We are the ones that he has actually chosen for his own good use and pleasure, his own name. Now listen, and he says, to be a, a dainty this is kind of weird. I can see the men saying, "I men ain't dainty." Now, <laughs> men, men just ain't dainty. But you gotta understand. In this sense, he's saying, like, be pampered. Allow, mm -hmm. be pampered in the Father. Let the goodness of the Father consume you. Let those things that that just trusting in Him and taking delight in Him. Let Him woo you. Let Him Ooh, give you His good right. self. Right. Let Him give you those things. See over here, all these people have come against you. All these trials have risen up against you. But when you are delicate with the Father, your softness is exposed to Him, and you are trusting Him. He He's going to treat you delicately. He's going to woo you and nurse you and and. Pay for you you're gonna get that feel good that you need you're gonna have the peace that surpasses all understanding you're gonna have the unspeakable joy because what the joy of the father is your strength you will be stronger than you've ever been even though your vulnerable parts are exposed in him he's saying you don't have to put no guard up in me you don't have to have no wall no hardness no none of that in me I am your hardness. I am your, your defense. I am the good thing that you need. So if you would just have pleasure mm -hmm. in me, so much so that you can let every guard down, that you can let your vulnerability shine through. See, he says, acknowledge me in all thy ways, and I will direct your path. That's being vulnerable. Because, see, we ain't going to always feel good. We're not going to always have the right words. We're not going to always do the right things. Right. But when we are acknowledging that state of being before the Father in all our ways, mm -hmm. he ain't say, just come to me when you're pretty. Right. Come to me when you can say it. Yeah. Come to me when you're in the church house. Right. Come to me when you're around some folks. Right. No. He said, whatever state of mind that you are in, whatever mm -hmm. state of being that you are in, come if on, you would on, just acknowledge on. me, yes. then I will direct your path. Y'all, that yeah, is yeah, instruction come on, come on. and promise. Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So if Anytime you feel lost, you should yeah. first do what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him, him. in I'm your saying. lostness. Father, I am lost today. Yes, Father, yes, I am yes. consumed in yes. thought about yes. this yes. issue. Yes. Father, and I yes. seek Come you on. for deliverance, healing, peace, and guidance. Yes. Father, yes. I know yes. for a fact that my mind is not capable of there figuring this out. Yes. Father, I know for a fact that this mm. don't feel good, but I choose to delight in you. Come Father, on. because you have told me mm. that if I acknowledge yes. you in all my yes. ways, yes. that you're going to direct my path. Yes. So I know even right now, Father, that you yes. are going to guide me through this thing even though it don't feel good even though it don't look good you know what I choose to smile today because my confidence is in the Lord I trust him right we're coming back up to trust and I'm gonna do a good thing today I am not going to allow this situation to in, uh, to affect my ability to think righteously I'm not gonna allow it to change my attitude my disposition my demeanor so when I come in contact with somebody who needs to see you they can see you and me can see I'm doing good not the good that that you can be self-righteous yeah, about yeah, yeah. but the kind of good where the father can say man you if only you knew mm -hmm. what my daughter was going through yeah. but I'm going to tell you right now it ain't time for the testimony because yeah. she's still in the test but she ain't changed she is checking this yeah, thing yeah, off yeah, yeah, he is yeah, checking yeah, this yeah, thing yeah, off yeah, I'm on, sitting here on. giving her everything that she yeah. needs and she's running to play like come that's on. what he wants us to do yes 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 and then he says if you could just take pleasure mm. in me I will give you the desires of your heart mm. if you just decide yeah. to take pleasure in me. Yeah, if yeah. you just say, he's enough. Yeah. The father is enough. Yeah. 
We we too busy trying to get to the promise. Right. But y'all, That's this right. is the thing. Ain't nothing in this world the promise he talking about anyways. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't the promise. Yeah. The promise is when we get to dwell amongst them again. The yeah. promise is when we get to t put our feet on the gold paved roads and we get to go into the many mansions and find our room when we get to lay our crowns at the foot of the Hamashiach. That is the promise. Yeah. But the world says, yeah. hey, if you would just serve me, you can have that promise mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And the father said, ain't no way. Because whether they, whether you know it or not, which they do know it, I'm going to destroy this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to destroy this one yeah. and all that in it. Yeah. So I'm going to tell y'all right now, now, just take delight in me. Because I on. am so masterminded that I will give you the desires of your heart in this place, mm. even though the promise will still await you in yeah, the next. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come Hallelujah. And then he says, commit your way unto Yahuwah. Y'all got to hear me. I'm yeah. so worked up on the inside because it is so crystal clear. If yeah. I just back it back up to the beginning and just read it this way to you, you're going to be like, uh. He says, do not fret. Don't be envious. They're going to get cut down. Trust in me. Dwell in the land. Feed on my faithfulness. Delight yourself. I give you your desires. Now commit your way. You wait. Hold on. Hold on. That's it? That's it? Yeah. It's like, is it so? It ain't hard. You, you got to think about it. It's not as hard as it seems. He says, don't let it consume your mind. Right, right. Don't get jealous about it because okay, they're going to get okay. cut down. You yeah, do yeah, what they yeah. do, you get what they got, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he says, just trust in me. Take confidence mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to have it figured out. Just know that I will. Yeah, know yeah, that I yeah. can. Know that I'm able. Know that I'm for you. Yeah. Know that I'm on your side. Mm -hmm. Know that I'm a promise keeper. Know that I'm a covenant keeper. Know that I'm not a man that I should lie. Know the son of man that I should Come repent. On, man. Know man. that I am the great I am. Yes, I know am. that. That's your confidence, right? right. Know that yes. my plans for you is to prosper you, to give you a future and I hope not to harm you. Yeah. He's saying, no, this, take my confidence, right? Yeah. And then he says, trust in me also. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He says, uh, dwell in the land. Now, this is, this is what happened. Y'all got to understand the dwell in the land. Now, I was sitting there, and I was like, Father, what do you mean by dwell in the land and feed on my faithfulness? See, y'all got to understand that he tells us that we are not of this world. Mm -hmm. He also tells us that we are passing through. We are aliens. This ain't home. He says dwell in the land. Matter of fact, we are ambassadors. And what happens is wherever we go, the kingdom goes too. Mm -hmm. He says because the kingdom of heaven is what? Within. Yeah. So if the yeah. kingdom is a place, the yeah. kingdom of heaven is a yeah. place, and it is within you, he's telling you to dwell in that land. Oh. Dwell in the kingdom of heaven that is in the inside of your yeah. heart yeah. that will allow yeah. you to experience my goodness yeah. Yeah. even though the place I sent you to ain't yeah. quite yeah. there yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Dwell in the land and feed on my faithfulness. Oh, you ain't got to worry about this mm -hmm. earthly treasure. You ain't got to worry about this mm -hmm. earthly food. You can feed on my faithfulness. Right, Woo! Because right, right. I'm a oh, promise keeper. Oh, yes, thank you, Father. Yes, I'm a yes, promise yes. keeper. And then he says, now just commit to me. Because mm -hmm. I've committed to you. Yeah, yeah. Commit to me. Yeah. Really commit cool. your way. Yeah. All you got to do is say, wherever I go, I want to be in the good standing of the Father. Yeah. I yeah. say this all the time. Father, whatever you do, Please do not do it without me. Mm. That's your way. Whatever you're doing, I just want to be where, where you are. I want to go where you go. I might not have it all figured out. I might stumble. I might fall. But Father, I'm committed to your way. If I can't understand it, Father, I'll cry out to you. If I, if I go too far to the left, Father, I expect you to take the yoke Come and pull on. me yeah, on back. Yeah. I take That's the rod yeah. and pull me on back. Like my expectation in you is, Father, that while I'm still trying to figure this out, uh -huh. Father, I don't have to know it yeah. to do it. Yeah. And I don't have to uh uh I, I don't have to focus on the world to be everything you've called me to yeah, be. Come on, come it's on. already when you were born into this world, he had already given you in the inside what you needed to what? Sustain, sustain, endure, yeah. and overcome. Yeah. He's always giving it to you. That's why he tells us the kingdom of heaven is within. That's why I say faith is the substance. Yeah, it's the substance, mm -hmm. right? Then he says, trust also in him. We come back to trust again. He said, listen, when you commit your way, trust me as well. Don't just, don't just trust me and do good because I told you not to focus on them. He says, I want you to trust me in your commitment. 
Because I understand that there are going to be some things that are going to challenge you. There are going to be some things that may cause you to think twice. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the right type of test, the right type of somebody that will make you consider. Yeah. I've heard people say, man, this is so bad, I don't even know if he real no more. If, if, God, if, oh, if God is so man. real, why does... Look, 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 look. no, you got to hear me. If, if God so if, if if God loves the world if he if he's so real why he take my mama yeah why why he take my mama she was a good woman why he take my baby as if you that yeah but that's that's that kind of hurt that's that kind of hurt that can't be explained away yeah and people start saying just and and not to be I don't not to get too into this but I just want you to think about it we have parents right now grieving the loss of their children who only went to school. That's it. And they trying to figure out, Father, how is this good? Mm -hmm. Father, how, how does this show me that you for me? Mm. How does this show me, Father, to continue on in your ways? Mm. How, how does this show me, Father, that when you said that you had that you know the plans for me, plans to prosper me, to give me a future and a hope not to harm me, my, mm. I, I would like to think that if something happened to my baby, that harms me. I, I, w I would like to think, Father, that if, if, if you was who you say you was, you'd have spared this tragedy from my innocent, yeah. defenseless yeah, yeah, yeah. child. What if, yeah. what if he answered and said, well, if you knew me like you said you knew me, you would know that my ways are not like your ways. Which my is, thoughts are not like your thoughts, for my ways are higher than your ways and thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yeah, I agree, because it comes back to the word that says, commit your way and to trust me. See, even though you didn't get that answer, and even though it hurts, I also promise you that I'd never give you more than you could bear. And as much as your baby was yours, it was yet mine. And you got to understand that I have a plan that's so masterful that you're hurting right now, but you're going to rejoice later. You're hurting right now. The suffering right now won't compare to the glory to be revealed. And I know that hole in your heart can't be explained by mere man. But if you will just continue to what? Trust. Trust me and commit your ways unto me. Yeah, he yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I shall bring it to pass. Yes. Not to thy own understanding. He says, I shall bring it to pass. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and what is it that he should bring? This is why I love Psalm 37. He said, I shall bring forth your righteousness as the light mm. and your justice mm. as the noonday. Yeah, so that yeah, yeah, baby yeah. or that issue yeah. that seemed like it took yeah, from yeah, you yeah. something mm -hmm. that was so precious and special. The father says, Ooh. I will make your righteousness shine uh -huh. as the light and your justice as the noonday. Yeah. It will not be, it will be undeniable for anything and mm -hmm. anyone to not see that I am with you. I am for you and that you are going to be in the best place wow. ever because I am here. This is what wow. I get to present you to this table and say, this is my son. This is my daughter with whom I'm well pleased. If we could just commit, commit our way unto the Lord. If we could commit our way unto him and trust him in the commitment. I just thought about this. That person is thinking about why you take my child, but what if Hamash, what, what if Yehoshua spoke and said, but did they not take mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll never give you more than you could bear. And he's not insensitive. See, the thing we have to remember is it was written before we ever came into it. Did they not spit on mine? Did they not do unto and, mine? And we, we, we have an idea of suffering from the world standpoint, not from the father's standpoint. See, what we imagine is the things our children or that person or that, mm -hmm. that, that person must have felt, must have mm -hmm. went through. We took our eyes off of the promise where you will what? Not suffer anymore, where you will feel no pain, where your joy will be uh, unlimited, where mm -hmm. your peace will be unlimited, where you in the perfect place of being. Like We took our, our thoughts off of the perfect place. Right. Because we have a desire, a selfish desire to have them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I say that, counting my blessings right now, knowing that I won't be here always, right. not knowing if I'm going to, when I'm going to leave my kids, what state of being they're going to be in. Are they yeah. going to be full-blown adults, married yeah. and having children, or will I leave yeah. here before then? Matter of fact, I don't know, will, will he leave before me, mm -hmm. I before him? But we can't focus on those things. What we have to do is commit our way to the Father and trust Him regardless. Mm -hmm. That has to be a made up mindset and effort so that when these moments happen, they don't break you. They don't ruin you. They don't destroy you because there's something about a broken heart that does not get the security of the Father that will kill a person. And I'm talking about in the worst way. 
It's, it, it is a punishment that can't, it feels like a punishment. When the father is available to restore you, but you can't receive him, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because you're so broken. Yep. But I just thank the father that our minds are just, we don't have the ability to stretch our minds enough to understand his ways, to understand how he's able to do it in me and do it in you and do it for her and do it for him and do it this way and how it works. But we have to have the utmost confidence in him, the utmost trust in him. And we have to be committed because if we, if his action were based on our action, then it would be a hot mess because we have gone back on our work so much and he has been a promise keeper in spite of he has still delivered us when we was the weapon we formed against ourselves right he has been there for us well, I'm telling you he's been there when we have decided that we didn't we just wanted to give up when we decided that life wasn't worth living no more when we decided that there was no good in us when we decided that we was gonna go and do harm toward others because we've suffered enough and he saw fit to bring us out of that state mm -hmm. into a place where we can see a good moment, where we can have some joy. He, my honey had pains in his body that I could never understand. He would cry himself to sleep. It felt like an, an eternity. Let me say that again. Felt like an eternity. I just, when was it going to end? We're in geriatric clinic after geriatric clinic. We trying all kinds of medicines and functions. And I'm talking about to the, where they stick the needles and the acupuncture and, 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 and to, to I'm, all kinds of weird cat scans and ointments and medicines. And, and he, what, what, Johnny, at least 32, 33, somewhere around there. What? When this happened. This was before to honey, five years ago. Yeah, ministry. It was in the first year the first of the ministry. Year of ministry. First so about year thirty-five. Or two of the mm -hmm. So and, and we would go into the you forty now. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. So we would go into these clinics, and we're seeing eighty-something year olds and and ninety-year-olds, and they looking at us like, "What are y'all doing in here? Like, what what's going on?" And and one of them was like, "But you're young." And Johnny got up, and he could hardly walk, and he was hobbled over, and his feet hurt, legs hurt, and they was like, "Well, wait a minute." All that because I asked to feel y'all affirmity, so I know how to you pray know, for y'all. But I say that what was I thinking? to say <laughs> it was a matter of time. When the father knew what he had to go through, but see, Johnny, that you didn't ask that co out of coincidence. Yeah, I know. It, I, I, it was I, I, already written. The father postured you yeah. and put the right things to happen in your life and allowed those things to get you to a point that you would seek that in him and so I, he can use you. I remember asking. I remember asking. I may not understand fully what I'm asking. Yeah, but he was glorified in it, and that's the thing. So you went through a season of unexplainable pain. You went through a season where the pain felt like death. Yeah. You went through a season where all you could do was cry. Yeah. You went through a season where you was hurt so bad you couldn't even support your family. You couldn't work. You couldn't. You you could. He would get off work and he would hobble to the bed and he couldn't move. Didn't want to eat. Y'all, you. I'm telling you, I was a witness to his journey and I didn't always understood it. And at times I was insensitive to it because he was handling it better than I could have imagined. You know. When people aren't crying, it don't mean they pain ain't severe, mm -hmm. right? And, and sometimes the frustration in the midst of the hurt is another element. Mm -hmm. You can be so tired of hurting yep. that the frustration brings tears. Yes, yes, the yes. frustration brings, brings you, you know, you can be mean. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be bothered because you've been uncomfortable for too long. You've been in pain for too long. You ain't got no answers for too long. And you cry now to the Father, and he ain't showed up in the way that you wanted him to just yet. But I say all that to say, when you commit your way unto him and you trust him, you will go through those knowing that the Father going to see you through. And when he does, you don't just give him a hallelujah praise. You rededicate yourself to him. You double down on your commitment and you continue to do it. You continue to do it. You start saying, I remember when I was going through it in my body and he was faithful and just then. That a person that put their mouth on me or a child that come up against me this day, I already know he for me. The way he showed up for me and delivered me from myself when I was thinking on death, I wanted to die. 
Yeah. And and if I could have pulled the trigger, I would have pulled the trigger. But the spirit, the spirit of truth, grabbed me and ministered to me when I wanted to drink away the pain, when I wanted to pop every pill I could get a hold of. It was something that was greater than myself that showed up. It was Him who soothed me. It was Him who nursed me. It was Him who wiped away my tears. It was Him who restored my confidence. It was Him who told me not to worry. It was Him who said this was gonna pass. That joy cometh in the morning. It was Him that showed up when nobody would answer the phone, nobody would knock on the door, and nobody would give me anything I needed. It was him. And right now he's telling us that he will bring it to pass if we do two things. Commit our way unto him and trust him. Man, every wrong that came against you, he's promising you that your justice will come as the noonday. Hallelujah. And then he says, now rest. Hallelujah. So he says, Rest in me as well. And I love that because sometimes just to just to trust him and just to commit your way into him takes work. It, it's, the, it's the action behind your faith. And then he gives you and takes you to that place and says, I want you to rest in me. Meaning that relax, right? I, I, I want you, you don't have to work this way. I, I have not only bring, brought forth your righteousness, and your justice, you can rest. See, sometimes when the opposition is before you and you know what it looks like and you know where it's coming from, we can get a sense of uh, paranoia. We can start looking around, we're looking for them, we want to see them. You can't relax when you're paranoid. You can't relax when you got an enemy on your tail. You can't relax. Ask King David. He went to hide away and he could not relax and he could to the point where he was crying out on a daily. He was crying out, Father, I know it is your matter of fact, he's the writer of this very psalm and it took him some time to get Get here because see at this point the father is answering him the father is reassuring him he's giving him instruction in the process right and he's telling him yeah you was crying before now my, you got to think about it we know the story of David we know that he was prepared he was out in the wilderness fighting beasts so that he would be secure enough to fight man and he was able to not just fight man but overtake armies he was so known for his ability to fight very well but here he is running from an opposition running from a wickedness running from an evil fearing for his life crying out to the father when his rap sheet said all he needed was what a, a slingshot and a rock this giant was so much so tall and so big and here you got King Saul who is mere man who don't have the reputation the ability the agility or the history that he has and he says listen I'm running but it's not because he lacked the ability to overcome mm -hmm. King Saul it's because he loved him Boy. it's because he served him it's because he had a joy in the position even though I'm king, and I know I'm king, mm -hmm. and I know I'm called to replace this king, I love this king so much that I would denounce my own calling just to be your friend, just to serve you, just to be in this place. And the father said, oh, no, 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 no. See, if I wanted it to happen that way, I'd have birthed you out his loins, and I would have killed him off or let him die of old age, and you would have inherited it. Mm -hmm. But no, I did this on purpose. Some of us got to understand that this has everything to do with positioning. This has everything to do with his glory being revealed this has everything to do with a masterminded plan that is actually going to do everything that needs to be done for the enemy see it's not the person it's the spirit in the person that the father is dealing with see he wants to show that this old nasty evil wicked spirit don't matter whose face is under doesn't matter whose skin it possesses it is telling you that the out the outcome is the same so if you start recognizing the spirit you will stop fighting the people you will be able to love the people, have compassion for the people, because you recognize the spirit. So you are going to allow the father to fight spiritually what is overtaking this person because they missed the part that said do not fret. They missed it. Their mind is consumed. They they have covered it. They are, they are lawless. They ain't coming back to the commandments that told us what to do. Don't put another God before me. The commandments that tells us that if it, uh, that we ought to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. The, the commands that tells us not to kill still. That tells us not to covet. That tells us not to bear false witness. But we out here passing rumors no sooner as we get them. We ain't fact checking them. It sound good. It tickled our ear. We carried it along and we, we didn't own it. 
You know what I'm saying? And the father's saying, listen, those workers of iniquity, those workers who are operating outside of my 10, outside of my 600 and, and, and plus plus laws, mm -hmm. they are out here living any way the wind blows. Mm -hmm. They're changing their mind day in and day out. They are doing what feels good as opposed to what is good. They mm -hmm. are going to inherit something that you don't want. So when you are looking and setting your eyes upon what you think they're getting away with, understand, ain't nothing hidden in me. Mm -hmm. You just stay right on over here, right. trusting me, committing your way unto me. Don't fret. Don't be envious, right? Mm -hmm. uh, dwell in the land that's inside your heart. See, with the kingdom of heaven, it has no lack. He says everything that you need is on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And I can challenge you right now, mm -hmm. anytime you needed him, was he there? Yeah. Anytime you didn't have a clue, did that kill you? No. Mm -mm. Because on the inside of you, he knew exactly what it was going to take to get you to a state of what? Consideration, a state of dependence. That's why he talks about humility and he talks about the meek. He's posturing us to be in a position that two things don't change. Our trust in him and our commitment. Mm. That's all. He's saying, if I put you in the shallow end and you know you can stand up, will you trust me if the waves come? Now, I can just stand up. But if I throw you in the deep. And you can't set your foot upon the bottom. Yeah. Uh. Huh. Yeah, that's now, it would be that's easier good. to th be thrown in the deep because when you come back to the shallow and your confidence is secure. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we tread in the, in, the, in the shallow and we try to pretend like it's deep. Uh -huh. We could just stand up, but we over here kicking. Uh -huh. No, we can't swim. <laughs> we just go a little bit, stand up. <laughs> go a little bit, stand up. Yeah. But boy, you get time. six feet, like eight feet, ten feet, feet the ocean, yeah. you be talking about I need my life vest. Yeah. I ain't going out here unless I got a boat. I need a boat that's going to be able to take me back. Because you don't trust that you the same skills you had in the shallow mm -hmm. will prove the same work in the deep. But the Father says, I want to show you that I am one that will do it in every situation, mm -hmm. every circumstance. Yeah. That if you would just yeah. commit, if you would just trust yeah. me, that I'm going to bring it to pass. It, it, it. Two things. Your righteousness is going to mm -hmm. shine bright, baby. Oh, all of those who are looking at you like you dull, dark, twisted, demented, mm -hmm. and you a wicked, evil doer because oh, you are not, oh, you know, yes. conforming to the ways of yes. the world. It's like, oh, they're going to see that too, right? Because they're going to see me in you. Mm -hmm. He also said, I'm going to bring forth your justice. Don't worry about those who look like they got away with it. Yeah, they stole your money. Yeah, they conned you. Yeah, they came up with wicked schemes and, and plots to get, to get something from you that they knew wasn't right. Yeah, they was your friend at first. They said it, right? Yeah, they took their time to develop a trust in you and get you to believe them without question, only to come and do something that they knew would harm you, knew something that you would never do to them. He said, listen, I know, baby girl. I know, son. I know they broke into your house. I know they ripped you off. I know they lied to your face. I know they lied behind your back. I know they came in and caused harm for you. I know they look beyond your kids because that's the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. Ain't it funny how people will acknowledge your kids mm -hmm. and cause you harm uh -huh. knowing that it's going to affect your kids mm -hmm. and swear up and down they love you? Ain't that crazy? It's like, what is happening? But the father said, don't worry about any of that. Bring back your focus to me. He says, now, I'm going to allow you to rest in me, and I want you to wait patiently for me. See, sometimes we want, we want, the patience is hard, but you got to understand, anytime you mastermind something, that means you have to put certain things into place. It's kind of like setting up the domino effect, that if you get this beautiful illustration, you got to line all these dominoes up, and some of them don't stand straight up right away. They fall over, you got to start over again, you got to put it back up there. But once you get it in place, and it takes time, the more elaborate, the more time it takes. But when you hit that one and they fall just like they need to fall and they get to the end of that, man, ain't no greater feeling. But it took some time. It took a process. And we have to understand the patience that he's talking about is not the time to deal with them. It is the time to deal with you. He says these things are creating patience for you, patience within you. Because if you don't have patience, you don't have me. Yeah. Patience is a virtue. You got to understand, the enemy took 500 plus years mm -hmm. to concoct a plan, evil scheme, and get it carried out to steal the book. 
to change the words, to enslave a people, and then take them out of their language, their culture, and then try to tell them who they are, put a false messiah before them, tell them to worship it, and use the twisted words that they took to get them to deny who they were so that they would live a life subpar, so that they would live a life in the same bondage even in this so-called freedom. It took hundreds and hundreds of years for that. Yeah. And the father was patient enough to allow the enemy to put that plan into place, yeah. carry out that plan in place, so that his what? Glory can be revealed. Have now, if we're going to be impatient for the glory, how can we desire, how do we think we would be fitting for the reward? Mm, that's good. The, that's glory, good. the reward is in the glory. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, in yeah. the glory. And it ain't our glory, it's his glory. Yeah. And he says, listen, y'all, they got us so stuck on right now in this world, in this time, what we can see that we done forgot about the new Jerusalem. We done forgot about the new kingdom. We done forgot about the second coming. We done forgot about all the things that he's promised. And this is what it is for. He ain't put us through no hell to die because of no vehicle we can't take into heaven. He ain't put us through this hell to, to cry about a house that he can restore in a heartbeat. He ain't put us through this hell to have us deny everything spiritually for something naturally. He said, what profits a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? He never told us we could sell it. People are saying that. I heard it this morning. They sold, they sold, they sold, they sold. You can't sell something that ain't yours. He already paid the price for it. He bought that back well before you was in your mother's womb. Now what you can do is lose it. You know why? Because you can choose to gain the world. Have you considered, have y'all ever really looked at the story of Job and parallel to his people, his chosen people? Job showed us lost everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did not his people lose everything too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah satan said i'm looking to see who i can devour mm -hmm. have you considered my servant mm -hmm. have you considered my people you just said something there cool. satan mastermind for a while but father allowed it to happen mm -hmm. because he knew you just said something you can't sell Somebody what don't belong to you? you i already got them they mine so go ahead and do what you think you can do mm -hmm. He said, you can't touch his soul. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean you couldn't kill him. Right. Right. Say, you, you can't touch his soul. Right. Didn't mean that we wouldn't perish. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. But he can't touch our soul. Wow. The story is very parallel yeah. if you look at what the people have suffered. Yeah. I just wanted, I just wanted to put that yeah. out there if you look at that comparison. But that's, that's the beautiful thing about the word. He's, he's, there is an answer. There is an instruction. And there is a promise. So he, he's promised us some things. So he tells us to rest in him and to wait patiently. And it's the power in the wait. See, the power is in choosing that even though it ain't happened yet, it's going to happen. And then you can move forward. What happens is, is we get so caught up in waiting for it to happen as if we're questioning it. We start saying, is it coming today? Is it coming tomorrow? Is it coming? To you know, it, it, almost like, now, if it don't happen in a week or two, I'm going to have to do something differently. This can't be it. You know, you, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But when you are waiting on the Father, you essentially have let it go. You actually let it go. You said, you know what? I gave it over to him. He said he was going to handle it. I'm going on, do what I'm doing from here. You know, stay in here. He got it. And then you look up. He done brought this thing back around. But show did. You know what? I forgot Peter said this. I forgot. Oh, I forgot they was. Look, I had, we want to work out our plan in that too. We want vengeance to happen still. where we can see it. But see, there's a thing. That's what He said vengeance is his. Because we can't see the heart of man. We can't actually justify anything or anyone. And we don't have the mindset, power, or capability mm -hmm. to what? To uh, condemn uh, out of our own experiences. Mm -hmm. We can't go through something, get mad at a person, and then have a, a righteous ability to condemn or judge them properly. We don't have that. So if the father is masterminding something, that means that this time you're going to be something to me that I don't like, and I'm going to be something to you that you don't like. We husband and wife, and we ain't liked each other. Mm -hmm. We ain't always liked each other. Tried to sell her for three magic beans. <laughs> Couldn't get a buyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that was coming but my point is if in that moment that he didn't like me or I didn't like him I had the ability or the power not 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 the, not the ability but the power 
to judge him according to what I could see and what I felt and what I was going through, then I would have been out of order. Mm -hmm. I would have been out of order because I didn't understand that while this was the issue, it was creating something in the both of us that would be so beautiful later. And it definitely has. Thank you, Father. <laughs> but but that's so we don't have the ability. We we can only see in part, and He tells us that I give you visions in part. While he's telling us what's to come, we can easily get consumed by what's in front of our face. Real. That's so real. We get so confused, uh, so consumed, and that's the fretting part. When he said, do not fret, he said, don't let this consume your thought. Don't let this take you and vex you in your spirit. But rest in me and wait patiently for him. Then he says, do not fret, y'all are funny, because of him who prospers in his way. Mm -hmm. I got a nice warm to that hot seat. Dude. <laughs> it's like you a blanket, Doug. Right? <laughs> should be hot up in this room. Yeah, I'm warm, but. Yeah, go get that shot. But he says, again in seven, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. And, and, and I think about that. He said, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. But he tells us that, um, he tells us in scripture, I'm sorry, I lost my thought. I'm sorry. I'm he, sorry. He, um, he tells us in scripture um, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Uh -huh. And any tongue that rises against us, we shall condemn. Yes. But right here he says, don't fret because of him who prospers in his way. Right. And we have to kind of wonder, is that a contradiction? Absolutely not. Because what he's saying is, they may look like they're moving forward. They may look like they're advancing. You know, word prosper, that's what it means to move forward, to advance mm -hmm. um, in a cause, in a way. He says, but do, uh, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of a man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Mm -hmm. That means they carried out the scheme. Yeah. They carried it out. That is like, that's like taking the bow, pulling it back, and shooting it. So yeah. they, once they set their aims, this was the scheme. Bloop, they released the scheme, mm -hmm. right? Now, he says, cease for anger and forsake wrath. Again, do not fret. This is what I love. It only causes harm. See, now y'all got to think about this. He said, I know the plans that I have for you <laughs> to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. He told us, but not to cause us harm. So when I see here, he said, do not fret because of him who prospers. In his way because the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Yeah, yeah. So he said, I know the ways or the plans that I have for you. That won't cause you harm. But if you fret. If you allow this situation to consume you and vex your spirit. It's only going to cause harm. He said, it's only going to cause harm. Why? Because guess what? Evil do is going to be cut off. You don't have to put the energy into it that you're trying to. You don't have to worry about the end result for them. The evildoers, the true evildoers. Now, I don't want y'all to confuse evildoers from people who just got an error. Mm -hmm. When I was listening to you talk about being vexed, being vexed can sometimes get you in a rage where you like you out the plot and try to get stuff done. And not only that... Father, thank God for blocking it because, see, you set yourself up. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked Tyler. about. And um, when you was on the way here, we talked about the fret nor be envious because the fret is the kindling. It is the flame that is slowly burning on it, right? But then when you when you become envious of because, and this is what it means by envious, it looks like they got away. And so now you have uh, just this inspired motive, uh, 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 zeal to support your anger that causes you to move in that anger and and to sin. So that's what happens when you fret. It becomes that kindle. And then the more you consume your, the, the more it consumes you, that you get vexed in your spirit. And if you're vexing your spirit, you're shutting the father out. You can't hear reason. Mm -hmm. Do you know he put the right thing, the right people in place to handle that thing right? Now? Absolutely. This is why he said, trust in me. Commit in me. Forget about it all that time. Yeah. That's so and then so he says that only causes harm. So you got to understand whether you agree or not, evil doers is going to be cut off. He says, but those who wait on me will inherit the earth mm -hmm. for yet a little while. 
and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but you shall be, but he shall be no more. What a day where you look up and the father cut off the evildoers, mm -hmm. the ones who have put so much energy into making your life a living hell, the ones who have just been the testing, been the, the, been the tool that helps you develop these Christ-like characteristics, right? And you look up one day and not only are they cut off, you done moved in a space that they don't have access to. Mm -hmm. And because they've been on your tail for so long, you was looking for them and you couldn't find them. Mm -hmm. You look, you like, wait a minute. What? They ain't nowhere to be found. <laughs> he said, that's when you inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight, once again, take pleasure Yes, yes. themselves in the abundance of peace. Hold yes. on. We got to deal with this real quick. <laughs> See, oftentimes, I know what's coming. I know that, that, that a new earth is coming. I know that the Father is doing a great thing. I know, but I want y'all to understand what happens when you are inheriting. Mm. When he has just denied the access and cut the wicked uh, evildoer off. The evidence, the evidence is abundance, peace. Abundant peace. Abundant, yeah. abundant peace. Abundant peace. When, you, no when they are peace. cut off, you have abundant peace. That's that peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. Yeah. That's that peace that come even though the circumstance don't look like it's changed. That's that peace that come that mean the person that has been giving you the most hell is still your boss. And you still report to them and they ain't went nowhere. That's that peace that comes that even though you didn't come up with the money in time, you still got everything you need and more than you could have hoped for. That's that peace that comes that has nothing to do with the natural circumstance changing. And you can just bask in it. And you start saying, ooh, I feel so good. Ooh, I, you know, people start saying, how can you smile? Wait, did, did this happen yet? Did they arrest him? Did the trial happen? Did they fire her? Did they do this? Did they pay your rent? Did they do this? And you say, no. Nah. I don't understand how you smiling. Girl, I couldn't smile. I wouldn't do nothing but cry. People don't even understand that. And you say, listen, the father gave me this peace. And baby, if I got to scrap with you to keep it, we gonna scrap today. Cause this piece so good, I don't ever wanna go back. Would you be okay with me jumping in and saying a few things? Oh no, concerning I, I, these I, I, last. I, 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 I was waiting on you to come back. Look, I was waiting on you to come back. So I got us two eleven. Oh yeah, I know. That's, that's, but that's, this is the perfect part for yes. me to come in because you dealt with one of these words that when I'm reading the whole scripture, I said if y'all paying attention. Father repeated himself numerous times. Yep. Numerous times. Anytime he repeats himself, is worth taking note. First of all, okay, no problem. First of all, let's deal with nine, and then we're gonna deal with eleven because he repeated himself. I want you to. I want you to uh, read it for yourself. Somebody read nine out loud for me. Don't go to Johnville. You been here this long now, Miss with you. <laughs> So, Psalm, Psalm 37. Psalm 37 and 9. Psalm chapter right. 37. You've been here this whole time. You know we've been. Uh, yes, ma'am. 9. And then uh, 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 then I want you to read 11 because I want y'all to catch something here. Read 9 and 11? Yes, ma'am. Go all the way through. Uh, uh, or just those specific. You know what? Now, I, specifically, I want you to read 9 and 11 on okay, purpose. Okay, gotcha. 9. For those who are evil will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But for those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Okay. My verse say inherit the earth. All right. Mm -hmm. Now go to 11. But the meek will inherit the land Ooh. and enjoy peace and prosperity. My verse say the meek shall inherit the earth. Now, in, in both of them verses... He said we're going to inherit, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Inherit the earth, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to deal with this word. And, and then he said delight again yes, in is. 11. The word delight that Shemores gave you was what that is. But let me show you the, the results of the word delight. The results of the word delight comes from Hebrew, well, H7521 in the Strongs, which is a word called rasa which is R-A-T, 
S A H Rasa. Now, Rasa is made up of the word Rish. Well, yeah, Rish Sadi Hey. Rish Sadi Hai. And, I, and I'm I'm going to break it down to you. But the light from this part it means to be pleased with specifically to satisfy a debt to be accepted or acceptable accomplish it means to approve to consent with or delight or delight in oneself it also means to enjoy it means to have or be favorable it means to observe or pardon it means to take pleasure, have pleasure, or be pleasurable, pleasurable, or reconcile yourself. You see the difference here in the result of delighting now. So what what is when we when we spread in the Hebrew, resh, which is the head, person, first, chief, most important, or what's the highest? Zadi, which means. Man on the side, desire, need, hook, trouble, to hunt, to harvest. It means righteous and to pull toward. And then you got our letter hey, which means low or behold, to reveal or to show you something. This word delight. He said, and you shall del and they shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So uh, check this. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Come on now. So you have what was being desired? Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. What? The first or the most high mm -hmm. the the desire mm -hmm. or the need for the righteous mm -hmm. to reveal or uh, show you something. So when you delight, when we delight ourselves in him, he reveals to us the abundance of his peace. Right. Hallelujah. The harvest of his peace, the righteousness of his peace. Who's revealing this? The chief, the head, the most important. Yes. All right. Yes. So that, 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 was the, that was the significant part of the latter part of, uh, of uh, delight. Now let's deal with meek. Let me ask you something about that word meek, because he said the meek shall inherit the earth. And I'm going to help you understand the importance of the earth. Now, what does meek mean? Tell me. I, just What you think meek means? I'm going to break it down for you, but tell me what you think meek is. Okay. Okay. Jumpy, you got anything? Or you want to side? Okay. All right. I'm going to show you all where you're on point at. He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. All right? Mm -hmm. The meek is a word called anav. A-N-A-V in Hebrew, anav. Mm -hmm. And it's spelled ein, nun, vav. And it's also found H6035. Now, what this word meek means, and I'm going to give you a whole breakdown of it so you can see something here. And it's going to make sense. It means depressed figuratively or in the mind, gentle or circumstances, needy, especially saintly. It means humbled or humble, lowly. The meek shall inherit the earth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you understand your people. Ein, which means I, to see, experience, understand, a fountain. Noon, y'all hear me say this a lot. Noon means seed, fish activity, life, to sprout, descendant, faithfulness. Or, boy, if y'all don't catch this. Vav. Or wav, depending on how it's used, V or W sign. It means nail, peg, add, the word and, A and D. It means joining together, it means to hook, make secure, becoming bound, nail to. All right, let's break this down. The meek shall inherit the earth. So, 
the experience of Abba Yah's people help them to understand who, who, who is them? His descendants. Because of what they went through in being depressed in the mind, who've been lowly, who've been humble, who've been poor, who've been dealt with as slaves, who've been mistreated. Depending on him. What they did was, because of all of this, it caused our faithfulness to grow and join us together, make us secure and become bound to Abba Yah. So because of all of that and being humble, the meek shall inherit the earth. Now let me ask y'all something. What's so important about the earth? Why, why, do, why are we inheriting the earth? What's important about the earth? Because if you remember, when I first started teaching, not I, but when we first started teaching, over in that building over there, I taught you the difference between earth and world. Okay. Check this. You ever heard somebody say, I'm in my own little world? Uh -huh. You can be in your own little world on the earth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, you can. Because of somebody's world, it caused us to go through some hell. Yep. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. We, based off of the idea of the heathen, forced our world to go through some depressing, mm -hmm. humbling, killing moments where we would seek and we will see some things happening at all that we had no control over, wow. even until this day. But he said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm. Those that have been humbled, because yes, I humbled you, I scattered you, but I never told them to do what they did to you. Mm. I humbled you. I made you lowly so that you can depend on me. But I still want to hear the answer from y'all. Why is the earth so important for us to, to, uh, uh, to inherit? You have a clue. I feel like he's giving us back what's rightfully ours. What, we, what, what he, he, he promised us in the beginning. Okay, and what, what did he promise in the he beginning? Took the earth. He said, well, took me, uh, rule over the lands and things like that. And, All right. You know. Let me give you the answer. Turn to Revelation chapter 21. Turn to Revelation chapter 21. When y'all there, let me know. All right. Check this. Here's why it's so important. Revelation. I'm going to read one through three. And I saw, and, and this is Yehuchanan, John speaking. And I saw a renewed heaven and a renewed earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, Yahukanan, saw the holy city renewed Jerusalem, coming down from Yahuwah out of the Shamayim, heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her man. Verse 3, and I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahuwah is with men, and he will tabernacle or dwell with them as they shall be his people, and Yahuwah himself shall be with them and be their Elohim. So now do you understand why it's so important that the meek shall inherit the earth? And why he said that they shall inherit the earth. Because for one thing, the, this particular earth is going to be done away with. Yeah. But the new earth, he going to live with us now. Mm. Wow. As it was intended in the beginning wow. when he dwelt with Adam and Chuah, Adam and Eve. He dwelt with man in the beginning. He's coming back so that he can do what we missed out on and dwell with us again. The word just said that he's going to dwell with man and man is going to dwell with him. And we shall be his people and we he shall be our Elohim. So it makes so much more sense and importance when you understand Torah and the law the way it should have been written. And understand it because we are going to inherit what we lost. What we never should have lost. Him. But to come back to just what you said, why? Why would he he give us uh, the earth? It's it's in two words that you said a couple times, or one word, which is low. B 
Behold. Behold. So when you broke down the Hebrew wor uh, word and you came back the revelation, what he's going to reveal is all things new. Come on, And the all things new is when he, the old earth and the old heaven passes away and he's going to behold the new. So this is, you got to think about it. When you, when you um, have a bride... She's presented like a, a almost like new. Mm -hmm. She's veiled. She she's come. So he's making all things new. And uh, to to kind of really show that again is in Revelations twenty one when he said after he did all that he did he said in five then he who sat on the throne said behold I make all things new. That's what he's doing. Yeah. This is this is the the. Result of really? the glory. Hope y'all caught that. The glory is it all things are made ear. new. Wow. He's making. He says, "Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Have you? Have, now, do you, you not, not perceive it? it? Yeah. Like, do you not know it? I'm doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. This is about a newness. I hope this didn't go this, over y'all. Listen, <laughs> the process that we are going through in our suffering is to be made new, mm -hmm. yeah, so that we can dwell in the newness." Mm -hmm. With the new thing. And if we don't change and we look like the old thing, we have to perish with the old things. Right. It's to be made new. Thank you for the new. It's the new. He said, be patient. I'm making you new. Don't die in this state. We have to be ready. You do. He says, don't die in this state. I'm making you new, but you're not ready yet. You're not there yet. You still have old traumas in your heart. You still have old habits in your heart. You still have instability in your heart. You still ain't made up your mind about me yet. I don't want you to die right here because you have not been made new. So I I want to develop your trust in me by show by me being able to show you that I can do it over here too. I can do it over there. See, we can trust the Father in one avenue of our life, but we ain't trust him in another. Why? Because we hadn't experienced him that way. So what he says is, I'm gonna put you in a series of trials. I gotta humble so you. Thank you, but make you dependent upon me. But I gotta show myself faithful. He says, eat off my feed, off my faithfulness. See, Job got everything. And most of them said he got it because he was righteous. He earned it is what they kind of put in his head. So the father said, well, let me show you. Let me show you that the reason he have it is not because he's earned it, but because he has committed his way unto me. Mm. And because he has committed his way to me, I have given him the desires of his heart because he took delight. And then he said, I know it's getting in you. And then he said, but let me show you real quick. I just want to finish my sentence. Let me show you real quick that if you delight yourself in me and I give you the desires of my heart and I take those desires away, will it change your mind about me? If something came and took those desires away, maybe I gave them to you and an enemy came in to kill, steal, and destroy. He stole that from you. Will it destroy your delight in me? And Job said no. That's why he said my humble servant Job. Because Job, through the things he went through to find the delight, he had become Yah dependent. He became so dependent upon the Father that the Father knew that his way was committed. He knew that he had a made up heart to be committed in his way and to take delight and to trust him. That's what he want to know about each and every one of us. Us. Are you committed? Do you trust him? And if anything that is given to you, which is, y'all got to understand, the things given in this world are temporal anyways. So the minute they're taken away, did you change your mind about the Father? I ain't never seen anything worse than a person who got mad at God because a man took something from him. Mm. Yeah, mad at the Father. And got mad at the Father. And got mad at the Father. Never came back to inspect their ways. Never came back to inspect the person who came up against them. Never came back to understand sometimes we kind of, we, we sew our own bed. We, we, we could create our own trap we do some things we shouldn't have done we say some things we shouldn't have said but get mad at the most high get mad at the most high joseph got pushed in a ditch and left for dead by his brothers who got guilty took him out of it sold him into slavery like how you gonna have a partial remorse you didn't feel bad about my well-being you felt bad about the, the scheme so you changed the scheme it was like, you know what? I still want him to go. Maybe I don't want him to die, but I do want him to suffer. Well, which is worse? Right? Which is worse? And and the whole time, the word didn't show us that Joseph, I'm sorry, that Joseph got mad at the father about it. He gave him a vision. He gave him a vision, and then he carried it out. And what came was the scheme. And he showed that he was still dependent upon the father, still committed into his way. Even though he was separated from the people that he loved the most. 
We got to commit. We got to trust him. We got to take the light. He'll give you the desires, but he's going to always ask you to give them back. You can look, you can listen to what you said, then you look back over something that you did, and you say, uh. Yep. You know but what? now you got it. Now right? You got it. And then guess what happens? He bring a testing around uh-huh. again. Did you really get it? Uh-huh. He said, Oh, let me find my way back to, to mm-hmm. just acknowledge him in all the ways. Mm-hmm. That's gonna help you. He'll gra- he'll guide you right through it. Just like he's saying, I'm gonna put you through some things. I'm gonna see if you're gonna hang with So I can make you new. So I can make you better. Yeah, I'm making you new, baby. Like I, I want you to dwell with me. Do you not understand I'm coming back and the only thing that can come with me is the newness? The newness, it's the newness you got to be made over. You got to be new, you got to transform. You got to be changed from the inside out. You can't come like you was. You can't come looking like the earth and the the environment that you was in or the world that you was in. Mm -hmm. You got to come made over. That's Mm -hmm. it. And and when you get to that side made over, you ain't going to suffer no more. Make me over. Make me me over. Mm -hmm. He is amazing. Hallelujah. I'm sure Johnny don't remember what he was going to say. I want to be right. I want to be made over. So I'm sure you don't remember what you was going to say. but No, nah, because it was in the Bible. moment and the Father was giving it to me about Job, but I was like, I will. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> so. It just, it, it, was, it was for me to finish what I was saying. <laughs> you couldn't cut it off. Mm. Let the church say amen. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. All right, here we go. We're going to go on and get the music going. Jenny's mm-hmm. going to put the giving up information up. He don't remember. You know, when God gives you something, that it's, I don't know why, you never Probably remember it. Right mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't remember. Yep. Yeah, speak it then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If something has been said on today that touched your heart, I really would ask you to consider. At this time, we really need it. I'm not going to lie. We, uh, we really need your help. He said righteous speak wisdom. We could use your we could really use your help on uh, on this time. I don't have a set price for you, but let Abba Yah Speak to your heart if you would like to uh, give into the ministry. It would really help us out here. And what's being said, we totally thank you. We totally appreciate you for all that you're doing. What was that? We both said, what was that? Huh? Oh, because it came through so loud. I was trying to tell you that. Did you? 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 Pause or uh, block it. You know when time you play the it's body. Okay, I'm turning it down. No, you good. I'm just saying sometimes. Well, we pretty much we done now. So if they begin to block us at this point, did hey service over? Too late, Mr. Facebook man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till after the service. They be trying to. Uh, they try to shut you out. Yeah, they be trying to uh, say this portion has been. Has yeah. been uh. We don't cut. own the rights. Yeah, even even though we put that out there, we don't we own the rights. The they still right. do that. But yeah, so. Yeah, we, we, we need help this month. Um, I know it's been it's been a pressing season for many of us, um, but we, Jay and I, are totally dependent upon the uh, consideration we have toward the ministry to keep it going. Um, we have survived many of things, many of seasons. You know, we're going on year six in our own building, uh, so praise the Father for that. But generally, I think this, this has been the month that ain't looked like any other month. Um, when it comes to our contribution. So we're asking if anybody can do anything more. Um, we definitely appreciate it. We love to um, continue things going in our separate place, a place of meeting. Um, but we need some help. I know the Father's got an answer for us and it's coming, but it's just one of those moments we got to push through and we got to ask because um, the word says you have not because you ask not. Um, so we got to put it out there and we got to trust that the Father works through the heart of man and that those of you who have given to us, um, we thank you. We bless you. Those who are faithful in giving to us, we praise the Father for you. Um, it's because of your faithfulness that we've made it six years, right? Um, and we and we thank you for everybody who's decided that this ministry is worth keeping afloat. Um, and, 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 the, and the support that you give because you believe that. I was going to send out a message of uh, just asking if those who uh, really hadn't seen in a while or uh, 
if they still want to be included on the text messages or either the uh, the uh, you know Facebook because I don't want to flood anybody's you know Facebook page or their phone yeah. with messages if they you know moved on but they didn't want to say nothing so I'm gonna I'm send a message out on that does that sound yeah, wrong does right. that sound cool to do? okay no, that's, that's, that, that sounds fair. Fair. all right yeah fair. then they can they can reply back in you know personally if they they don't have to give a reason why I just say you know we're moving or something hey I told y'all in the beginning, y'all don't belong to me, y'all don't belong to S'mores, y'all belong to the Father. So the Father say, time for you to move around, you do what the Father right, say. Yeah. And so, you know, I wanted to put that, I wanted to put that message out there. So that way I'm not flooding everybody's, and they're getting a bunch of uh, TGCB text messages or uh, Facebook messages, and they're not really a part anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. We're all assembly, so remember I tell you, we don't do that member stuff no more. It, we're assemblies. Yeah, we, we you get are. what you need for that season, and then Father move you on. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, do you have that stuff you was playing this morning that was actually really dope? That's why we think about this morning. This morning, save I could have. Saved it, but she said, No, it was it through on. Apple. I know, I, I could have looked it up you. and put it I on. I told you I had tried to look it up and I didn't see it. Hey, could are you able to use your tablet to uh stream to the TV thing? Like, uh, 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 try to try to what am I thinking about the word casting? Casting, yeah, I'm thinking about casting. I'm sorry, yeah, man. I hope y'all really enjoyed the word today. Father used Shamoris to bring forth that word, he had been dealing with her on that, uh, I guess, all week. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, she brought forth the word. I'm very proud of you. I think you did a wonderful job. I think you did a wonderful job. That was a good message. Thank you for allowing me to get in and say a few things. But when I say a few things, I don't think it as in terms of a few things. I was allowing you. Um, so we, we knew Elijah had a, a yeah. performance today and Jenny knew that he was going to drop him and pick him up so right. the portion that he had was toward the end yeah so my my job in in this segment was to get us to the part where when he come back he can yeah I'm good okay. I, yeah I'm good <laughs> I it, was, it, was, it was it was a good message praise him because we, we have, it we, and, you know, we go and, through and things and we need to get the right, truth of right, the word you know, to help right. us. It, it, it helped because I know I'm dealing with some really tough things right now. Yeah, it, yeah. but oh, guess I, what? I, I promise cool. you, it has been nobody but Father carrying yeah. me through. Yeah, and I'm I know. so grateful. Who you telling? I'm so grateful. Man. But then look, Father, thank you. The, the little extra, yeah, everybody didn't have that. I'm going to get rid of something. He can make a way and fix it. I can't. Can't miss it. No way. Yeah. What? We gonna go out, y'all? Yeah. No I, was music. I was trying to find it. You you asked me to do this, and I'm trying to make it work. It's on my That's thing. I'm trying to see I, if I, I can cast it. Extra, you know, I'm doing what I can to get a little extra. I am. We thank and you. Oh dang! We need to get going. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. This cool. Y'all, thank you all for tuning in with us on this Shabbat. We hope that you are blessed. We can't wait to see you on the next Shabbat. Uh, also know we have another Holy Feast Day <clears throat> that's coming up here. Let me get you the uh, the actual calendar date so you will know our next Holy Feast Day. The uh, next Holy Feast, <laughs> y'all crazy. The uh, next, <laughs> the, the next Holy Feast Day we have coming up is on October fifth and October sixth, which is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And so we're going to celebrate that October fifth uh, through sixth, and it's the day of self evaluation and self uh, 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 selflessness. So. Uh, we'll come back and let you know on that again. That's October 5th and 6th, sundown, sundown, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. All right, y'all, love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful spot. Anything you want to say before we Hey, love y'all. I'm sorry I'm over here. I was trying to cast the TV. We're going we gonna to get it together better next time. There was some music we were listening to this morning um, in Apple Music that I was trying to find on YouTube and couldn't find. And therefore, we were trying to see if we could cast it from our computer. 
So, love y'all. Don't mind my silence. Bless y'all. May the Lord bless you indeed. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to fellowship with you and to with the Lord.